Hi guys, and welcome back to the Warring Crito. Welcome to another video. We're back here at Lion's Arch, and we're going to go in on the next main quest now. I've got loads to talk about today, but also, um, this is going to be quite a long mission as well, which works out pretty well, because that gives me stuff to talk about during the long, long encounters. It's, it's a quite, this is, did I say it last video? I, I said it was one of them. This is definitely one of my favourite, um, missions in the Warring Crito, and in particular, it's got probably the most important, I guess you could say, or interesting bit of lore in the entire Warring Cry. And in fact, one of the most mysterious awesome things, well, or at least it goes back to one of the most mysterious awesome things that was introduced in Prophecies, and it's the last we've seen of it, and I'm just hoping in Guild Wars 2 it's continued at least somewhat. So, uh, the story so far, of course, we know, obviously, about Zin and Blim, who have come, and they're, they're doing something here in the Warring Cry. They're trying to help us defeat the White Mantle. We don't know how. Something to do with the Mersart. We've got to see what's going on with them. And the next mission is, indeed, to do with them. So, we're going to speak to Princess Sam, and we're also going to go to where you start off in Guild Wars 2, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, rumours among the residents of Shaymor suggests that the White Mantle are now sheltering one of their unseen demons inside the town walls. So like I said, it, it, these quests, they're all about where the mess are. are they? they really, really are. Pretty much every single one as far as I remember. It's basically, oh hey look, one of the Messarts here. We desperately need to kill them. Okay, so our agents have concluded that this is most likely the laughably named Ailey, Ailey, I've, I've never been sure how to say that, Ailey the Innocent. So <laughs> clearly not innocent. We must continue chipping away at the White Mantle's leadership. The Messar are few in number and each one we slay is a great blow to our enemies. But this is not a task for the light of heart, as the Massar will be heavily guarded. See, I don't know, it's weird, because the Massar are supposed to be these really powerful kind of... I don't see them as commanders or people that are generally very good at guiding the White Mantle to victory, but rather just powerful forces in themselves. So it's weird that they'd be hiding back in the back lines and defended, basically, by tons of White Mantle, like they're actually more of a hindrance than anything else. But there you go. The Massar are few in numbers, and each one we slay is a great blow to our enemies, but this is not a task for the light of heart, as the Massar will be heavily guarded. If you choose to undertake this challenge, Make haste for Divinity Coast via the Secret River Passage in Tanmark Wilderness, and be sure to check in with Livia at the lab. She's been gathering intelligence on White Mantle forces in the area, and can help you plan your assault. This is your mission, do you choose to accept it? I just thought of something, and this is really weird, I don't know why I was thinking of that while I was reading it out. It's weird that Salma and Livia as well, like, if you remember when we first got to cry, everyone was like, vaguely black, right? And they all had like, weird marks on their face, but then they choose to like, make the Queen not like that at all. I suppose it's because in Guild Wars 2 everyone's typically Caucasian and they kind of wanted to, I, I guess, retrospectively change the ethnicity of Crichtons, I suppose, and this was just one of the subtle ways they've been doing it. Anyway, right, so we're going to say yes and uh, move on. So yeah, the Secret River Passage, this is our goal, this is where we're going to. Ah, do you get to do this mission with an eight-man team? Because you can start from the Temple of the... I think you can. Ah, oh, I completely forgot. Well, that's just as well, actually, because this is quite a, quite a hard mission. There's certain areas you can skip, like I say, but it's quite a hard mission. So who do we want to add? All right, hold on. I may break sort of our little kind of vague law thing here and just add Livia and Gwen, just because they're so helpful compared to these these other uh, heroes I've got here. So let's just go with that. I don't even know if they've got right builds. Hold on, let's have a quick look-see here. Alright, there we go, that's good enough. I, I literally just pulled a build out of my arse. I don't have any builds saved anymore. Since I changed my uh, hard drive a while ago, I just completely get, got rid of all of them and I've not replaced any. That just kind of shows I spend a lot of my time LPing, but not really playing the game, so I've got like barely any builds or anything like that saved. Most of what you see me doing is, is all I really do in game. Who's joining us at the moment? Nola Shepard. Ah, hello, please don't be alarmed. Lieutenant Thackeray sent me to help you with your current task, but Mantua have been sweeping this area more frequently as of late and he felt you could use the extra help. I hope we can get along. Didn't I already speak to you and read your dialogue out at one point, Nola. She's uh, an Ascalonian necromancer. But yeah, so um, so where are we going? We're going to the Secret River Passage. This here was basically a thing that was added like ages ago. I'm trying to think of what point in the in the, the War and Cry Let's Play it was that we it, it got added. It's like after the third bit of dialogue. It's like uh, immediate. Oh, it's the, it's the bit of dialogue just after you see Zin and Blim return uh, with Livia. And Livia sort of walks off with them. You can actually follow them. I didn't mention that at the time, but you can actually follow them and they'll walk all the way over to the river and then just disappear into nothing. And then if you rezone, you'll actually see that this, this interactive object appeared there and it was called the Secret River Passage. And you couldn't do anything with it. And, you know, that was a long time that was there for us people playing as the updates were coming out a really long time we were sitting there speculating about it and thinking what the hell's going on here and then of course the uh, the mission came out the last two episodes were on 
And that kind of told us, oh, awesome, okay, so ArenaNet's letting us go back into um, mission explorable areas, that's sweet. So then we kind of learned pretty quickly that obviously this passage was going to take us up to the Divinity Coast, because that's where Shamor is, and, and that's just been mentioned in the uh, the quest description. So that's what it's used for, but it was this really mysterious, awesome thing. I remember first seeing it and thinking, holy crap, was because that was one of the few things, don't get me wrong, I was kind of quite active on the forums and stuff as the updates were coming out, but I wasn't one of the people in particular. I did do it every now and then, but I rarely found anything. I wasn't one of the people in particular that was wandering around Kryta for hours and hours and hours blindly after every single update in the hopes that a tiny bit of dialogue appeared somewhere or anything like that. I wasn't I wasn't out there doing that. I was more in the forums reading about it as well. But this was one thing that I did find with the River Passage because I followed those guys, saw them stop there, and I was like, all right, well, what happens if I rezone? Uh, rezoned it, and, and then you find the passage. So I, I may as well just cut it till we get there. Um, and so the mission should begin, and hopefully we get to keep our eight-man team. Who the hell is that outside my door? Uh, do you know what? I, I, I thought everybody in my house, by the way, is, is Sunday and they all go out and play badminton. I'm not too keen on the exercise on a, Saturday, on a Sunday, so I didn't go with them. And I thought, do you know what? The house is empty. I'll do a, 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 a couple of videos here because nobody's going to disturb me. And now my door, dog is at my door trying to get in. So I'll have to fix that. I'll see you guys in a sec. Alright, so yeah, just out here, just at the entrance of Townmark Wilderness, you know, part where we've been here a million times, but you actually see this river here, I've mentioned it a few times, but now I'm actually showing it. Here's this river, right? This runs all the way along, there's actually quite a few rivers in Kryter, it's just you can't really see them on the map because they all look swampy colour. But yeah, you've got this river here, and if the fog nightmares don't get in your way, you actually find uh, that you well, your quest marker point there, you two here now, actually. Uh, what I think you can do, though, is before, now that all the updates are out, you can actually activate the river passage and go through it before you get, don't quote me on this, but I think you can do it. Go back through the uh, the, the passage, even if you don't have the quest active, and you can see Livia's in and Blim there at their newly set up lab, and uh, they'll talk to you a little bit, but basically they'll tell you to naff off. But here you've got uh, this collector. This collector was always here, by the way. This is just a prophecies... Uh, collector um, and she's standing here right next to the secret river passage which <laughs> there's no way to actually see it but it is there apparently you can click it and it says the river leads through the mountains into divinity coast and the hidden Asuran lab take the secret passage to divinity coast sweet taking this passage will transport your party into the coast are you sure you wish to leave this area yes take us to the Asuran lab no i wish to remain here no let's do it so yeah, you get to come back to Divinity Coast. It's the exact same format. We get to come back to this explorable area. But there is something very cool. So while before, when they sort of did the explorable area, they actually wrote in, oh, the reason why it was night time and stuff like that, and they didn't change anything at all. For the Divinity Coast, they seem to have put a lot more effort into this mission. There's a lot of different stuff going on. There's a lot of cool dialogue. A lot of different ambushes are going to be set up. And they actually change the um, the actual layout a little bit. So as you'll see here, is we're not actually in an area that the mission started us in. Obviously, the outpost is here. The mission started us here, if you remember you go through that Shaymore that's where the the Mersar is right now that's our ultimate goal for this mission we've got to get into Shaymore um, but instead of starting there now we start all the way over here and we kind of backtrack it's actually quite cool uh, you got this place over here I think this is usually blocked off if you try and come here before the mission because the village is in the way I'm pretty sure can't quite remember what the purpose of that is though I think that might just be one way out there are several ways out you got lots of villages around here though now, what was, I presume, just a small little settlement here. Now, what we're going to be seeing here, do you try and put this into perspective? This is all Guild Wars 2 area. This is basically Queensdale. This is all kind of Guild, uh, Guild Wars 2 kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. In the books, um, you actually find out that Blim's tomb, okay, is underneath Divinity's Reach, right? And the reason why he was buried there is because he's going to live the rest of his life here, um, right basically near where Divinity's Reach is going to be founded, okay? Shaymor, Shaymor, our ultimate goal. Um, this is where you start, Guild Wars 2. This is that's exactly where you start, and Divinity's Reach is literally just north. It, the, the, the landscape changes a little bit, but it's basically just north of it. So you know we're really, really, really close here, and I think it's so cool that that all tied up nicely because as these updates were coming out, I think it was around the exact same time that Ghost of Ascalon came out. So it was really cool to be able to see this, particularly this stuff to do with Blim because it's so relevant in that book. is really, really cool. Anyway, sorry, I'm not going to stand around to talking the whole time. So here's Gox. How you doing, man? You alright? He says, can I be Mon- Oh, no, he says, can I be Mongoose Dog? Yeah, because he talks like Gar, I forget. So, uh, he's here. They're all around here. You actually see we've got an effect on us here called Loose Magic. Okay, and this is affecting us. This obviously serves a gameplay um, mechanic here, which is, while we're under the effect of it, we can't use any skills. Now, well, that skill didn't fail, which is quite weird. Maybe- Oh, magic skills. Okay, so you can't use any magic here while the Loose Magic effect's on here. But this has got some interesting lore implications as well. When you combine it- with what we're about to see in here. But first we'll speak to Livia, I suppose. So she says, hey, 
What does she say? The real Livia, by the way, not the Livia in our party. She says, Greetings, I hope you're prepared for what's ahead. This task will not be easy. The Massart, Ailey the Innocent, is hiding behind a locked gate at the entrance to the Fountain of Truth in the hills above Shamor. Fountain of Truth, if you remember, we uh, had to interact with in the Prophecies campaign. I'll talk about that, I guess, on our route on our route there. Uh, the reinforced door is only opened with a key that is held by a particularly fierce jade construct called Cairn the Berserker, who is currently spreading terror in Lomehurst. By the way, that guy won't spawn unless you speak to Livia first, so do come do that. Uh, I've asked Zinn to whip up a little something that will help you penetrate the forces guarding Shamor, but he demands more time. Go kill Cairn, get the key, and come back for his weapon. It should be ready by then. Okay, so whatever the Asura have been developing, we can at least test drive here in this mission. So, what have they been developing? What have they been doing? So we can come down here into their new little lab place that they've built. There's some nice pots around here. Here's Zinn and he says, where would we be if no one tried to find out what lies beyond? Have you never wanted to look beyond the clouds and the stars or to know what it changes the darkness into light? Of course not. Look who I'm talking to. I don't know why I bother. Actually, yeah, that's I, this is basically the entire let's play me been wondering about this. Zinn, I feel like we'd get on a whole lot more if you just let us. Okay, so here's Zinn. He's got a, a golem blocking deeper into the lair and I don't know how good of a shot we'll get. Ah, it's good enough, I suppose. Alright, so do any of you guys know if you got any guesses of what that might be? If you think you do, pause, leave a comment to see how many of you get this right. Um, that over there, okay, drum roll, is a seer. That's actually a seer. Blim's over there, he's drawing magic out of it. So the way that the Asura are trying to f help us fight the Massar is they've actually found, captured, it's possibly dead, we don't know whether it's dead or alive this seer, but they found a seer and they're trying to extract the magic out of it. We of course know that the seers were in a long war with the Massar a long time ago, we know basically nothing about the race. Um, so this was really exciting when this happened in the War and Cry, because they were like, oh, Arena are, are still writing the seers into the story, they obviously have plans for them. It's just very, very cool. The, 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 for whatever reason, the seer aren't just giving the Asura their secrets. Maybe the Asura are just assuming that the Seers don't want to give it and they've just knocked them out and are forcibly taking their secrets. I could imagine the Asura to be doing that but for whatever reason the Seers aren't telling the Asura how to become infused and they're not telling them how to combat the Massar. David said no to the prospect or it's for some other reason like maybe the Eidolons are now completely extinct or something which were the beasts we need to get the essence to become infused. It's quite interesting is it but there's a Seer over there you can actually get a much better look at the Seer you see the sentry here blocking our way right and he says none are permitted. What actually happens here is this sentry um, in Guild Wars, I've talked about this every now and then, quite a, an advanced like mechanic uh, fact I suppose for you is, you, you see you've got your compass up here compass range, just outside that range by just a tiny little bit basically uh, what happens is whenever any players, when you first load into an explorable area, nothing's actually spawned in the map, it's only when you're just about compass range, just a bit more away from an enemy that they actually spawn and become real things in the map, so that's why you can always predict where something's patrolled the first time you find it, they're always moving in the same direction, it's because they've only just spawned. So uh, with that in mind, what clever people have actually done is, um, that doesn't count for heroes, so what I could have done when I came in here, is like stand all the way over here and just kill myself, get, vampiri get, get a vampiric weapon or, or kill myself somehow, and then start watching one of the, um, the heroes so that my camera moves with them. And then you can flag the heroes into that lair, and obviously the sentry won't have spawned and they can walk straight in, And from but doing that you can actually get a pretty nice camera camera angle of the seer and I think even by doing other clever stuff like um, using recall and shit like that you can actually get because this is uh, yeah now this it brings me back to this this is why loose magic exists here as well is to stop people teleporting past this sentry using conventional means like Heart of Shadow or anything like that. It's specifically to stop this. This is the whole reason it's there. So that's the gameplay reason. But you can also, I think they were quite cool and quite clever about this, because you can also say, right, well that's a seer. That doesn't um, adhere to magic given to the races by the god or anything like that. It's being worked on. It's got really weird, ancient potentially dangerous magic in it and it's being extracted into that crystal over there and now that is also causing loose magic which means all of the gods magic isn't working in the area which is quite cool I think I think that's really cool to sort of draw that conclusion and say it's because of the weird fucking ancient magic from that seer there screwing everything up but yeah very very cool isn't it I also like how quickly the Asura developed like their little lab but obviously this is all tarnished coast architecture and yes you'll see it looks exactly like all the ruins over there again is an I've said this so so much often recently I don't know whether this is arena net don't have a set separate um, set of architecture for Asura and for potentially the Massart ruins that are there or or what, I don't know, maybe the Asura decided they liked the way that stuff looked and started building the Sark crap. I don't know, it's a question I'll probably keep coming back to and I have over the Let's Play, we don't know, but this has obviously been built by the Asura. 
but yeah, there you go. That's their lab, and uh, and yeah, so we can actually get started on the mission for once. Uh, can we? Should we maybe speak to a couple of villagers? I suppose. See what they've got to say. I doubt they have anything really to say. Probably the same as the last mission. Oh, you know, he says strange noises from that lab. None of this is on wiki. Why? Makes me nervous, but I trust the princess, and if she says that they hold the key to defeating the unseen, then I'll defend it with my life. Holy crap. Okay, so if all the villagers have got dialogue, let's uh, let's go on a bit of a dialogue spree, shall we, guys? I can see quite a few markers over there. Did we not speak to everyone? Well, one of them's Livia, one's Blim, one's the Sentry. Oh, no, one's Zin and the Blim as well. Also, yeah, you can actually get behind there. I remember somebody got behind there, and you can speak to Blim, and he's got dialogue that you can see elsewhere or oh, no doesn't he have something really i've got i've got to cut this hold on guys i think he's got some really crazy dialogue for you one sec oh no it's, it's not the same okay so he does have dialogue i'm gonna read it out this is from wiki okay I, I think you can speak to him you must be able to speak to him some other way for him to come through otherwise it wouldn't have written the dialogue but this was the question that people were asking his dialogue says if you increase the parthenogenic wave frequency the energy absorption rate increases dramatically hey will you book a stand downwind the smell is distracting so that's what he says when you get in there and speak to him i think he must come out there. I remember when people were glitching past that sentry and speaking to him and, fi and found his dialogue. There was discussion about why he had dialogue in the first place. I thought he had some like cheeky little comment or something that was like, oh, you're not supposed to be here or something like that as if Arena Net anticipated that people would get through. But I guess not, huh? But there you go. Anyway, that, that's Blim. Um, we might not see him. He might not be able to get out. And the fact is that there is dialogue there. And that's what people were saying. Uh, I really can't remember. We'll see. We will be coming back here, obviously, to claim the weapon in a little while. So uh, another villager. Strange noises from that lab. I, I suppose they all just say the same thing, do they? This, this, the same lab comment. Can't believe we can be, we've been going 20 minutes. Oh, man. It's not been a while since we've done this. We've just literally stood around talking about crap for an entire episode. We've not even really started the, the, the freaking mission yet. Another villager. Have you got anything to say? You're a woman. So you... These are so strange and rude. I couldn't care less that they won't let anyone near the lab. Better for everyone that way. Yeah, true. If I was just a regular person. Yeah, there's obviously a way back out if you so choose. You can go back through the secret passage. Yeah, I don't think I'd let people through. So yeah, the only way out of this area is past these things. This is usually blocked off for you. And also you'll see Arena Network quite cunning. They put the entrance to this area right here so that trick I talked about earlier no dice with it because they automatically spawn the NPC that blocks the way but this guy he will move out of your way and he says I don't know what Livia's up to with those Asura but if the princess wishes us to keep them safe from the white mantle then that's what we'll do okay brilliant if it's got a very Pokemon-y kind of vibe to it with that guy stood there in the way and I, and I probably only say that because I've been playing Heart Gold recently I've been having a lot of fun with it, so I, I hope you guys are having a good new year, by the way, if you've got lots of games for Christmas or whatever, and you've been enjoying them. I've been playing so many different games. I've played, I, I've played and completed. I, I'm pretty sure I've almost completed Bastion. I've finished Halo Anniversary. I've finished Portal 2. I've been playing crap loads of League of Legends, crap loads of... And this is coming from someone who usually only plays one game at a time, so it really is... I guess it's just me enjoying my time off from work, this brief time I've got off. Actually, I should probably talk about that, actually. Um, I'm not sure how the videos are going to go for a little while because, uh, basically, for, for those of you who don't know, I, I, I was on an apprenticeship. I'm, I, I guess I'm still technically on an apprenticeship. But the way the apprenticeship worked is where I went, it used to be you just do like a 15 week course, essentially. There was no real on the job training, but they'd ensure you'd get a job after it, and that was basically it. And then you'd just be fully qualified, and that was it. But uh, our government changed recently to the Conservatives, and essentially they changed the leg legislation so everyone's forced to have on the job training essentially which is fine you know I don't disagree with that at all however that does mean the the people I went with for my apprenticeship kind of had to change things up quite a lot um, but basically I've, I'm looking for a replacement now at a new uh, company to complete like 20 weeks worth of um, uh, work to actually fully finish the apprenticeship I don't really care where I go for the placement and I might be let off after the place I might end up with a full-time job there at the end but I might not I don't really mind just as long as I get the qualifications I started for um, let's just speak to this guy see if he's got anything to say May the gods watch over you during these trying times. Yay, generic dialogue. Who doesn't love it? So, yeah, basically what's going on is... Um uh, they never secured a placement after I left so I left just before Christmas that last Friday before you know Saturday was Christmas Eve on Friday that was when I finished my placement um, but uh, sorry the original thing but so now I'm looking for a placement and uh, I've actually got an interview confirmed for tomorrow so I've kind of been like I, I'm, I suck well I don't know whether I suck at interviews people always say I sound a lot more confident than I'm actually feeling I don't like interviews I'll say that much uh, so today basically I've been trying out and doing all kinds of interview prep and actually figuring out what the hell this company is about so I almost didn't do a video actually, but I was like, do you know what? No, I need a break from this. I haven't done War in Cry for a little while. My original plan was to, um, I was going to do a winter.
Winter's Day and a Warring Crater every day, two Guild Wars videos a day, and then three when the dungeons were going up. By the way, the dungeon was awesome yesterday, guys, and yes, there's going to be another one today, not that you guys will hear this before that. Uh, but yeah, so, and, and then I only ended up doing one a day, because as I just said, I've been playing so many games, and I've kind of been screwing you guys over. But in any case, um, oh, did we get ambushed? Okay, so there was an ambush there, but they, they sucked at it. Basically, what's going to be happening here is uh, you can see on the, the compass over there some, some white mantle drop down. They're not killing the villagers, so yay for that, I suppose. What's going to be happening here is first we need to kill this guy, Kern, this uh, this jade construct, and to, to get the key. Then, which basically involves going to where the end of the mission originally was, the, the original mission. You go up there, then you go all the way back, get the weapon, and then you go to Shaymor, okay? Which is why this is quite a long mission. Coupled with the fact that, and I, I should probably talk about this later when we actually get to the point, but whatever. Coupled with the fact that once you get the key, as you start to walk down that path again, the entire path, um, there's just going to be things jumping out at you just constantly, just loads and loads of peacekeepers. You have to fight the whole way back. Arena Net were a little bit mean about it. However, you can kind of uh, skip all of that crap if you wish, which I did unintentionally the first time I played this because my team was pretty suck. Uh, we got up, got ambushed by the first group that ambushed you at the end where my cursor just was, and they wipe you. But obviously Arena Net, then they're not being mean like they were in Prophecies. You actually get your resurrection zone, so that's back at the lab. So you wipe, and then you just res at the lab, and it makes all of these ambushes on the way back completely redundant. It's actually one of those rare occasions on Guild Wars where it's generally a very good, very stable method of getting through a mission by deliberately forcing yourself to wipe. You know, that's so rare, that barely ever have. There's loads of positions where it can happen, there's a few like dungeons in certain areas that spring to mind where if you die at the right place you'll be skipped forward around like a massive horseshoe or something. Um, more often than not it's the other way around but, but there are a few areas like that but this is like the only one where it's just so blatantly the better idea, the better course of action. That it's, just, it's just not even funny thinking of anything else. But yeah we have got a long windy road, what else was I going to talk about actually? Um, I don't know, there was loads that I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, another thing was I, um, I'm getting a new TV as well, which might be something that, uh, sort of slows down the videos for a day or two, because I'm planning on, I'm, I'm one of these people that, um, like, just changes everything up in my room, like, constantly, just, like, alters the furniture. Even, even though right now I'm pretty sure my setup right now in my room is, it's, not that you guys care about this, but it's, it's pretty much perfect, like, it's the best way to take up all the space, but I think, uh, when I get my new TV, I've got, like, a wall bracket up and shit like this. I don't even know if the TV's going to be good. It's my brother's got a friend at work who's selling it. And my current TV is 28 inches, I think, is the size. I'm having a look here. I know that my other monitor is 19. So, nine. yeah, I'd say it's about 28 inches. But the thing... And, and the new one's going to be 40, which is way bigger, which is awesome. But the thing is, my current um, monitor, like... I don't know whether it's a driver problem. I think it's my TV at the moment. People say, it, no, this definitely isn't, the, basically it runs at 1080p and it runs perfectly crisp and clear, but if I update, if I update my graphics driver, it screws everything up and it just looks god awful, so basically I'm on really outdated driver uh, version at the moment, but by getting the new TV, I'm hoping that that might fix it and uh, I can update my driver and yay for that and actually get the performance that my card is offering. But yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to keep fighting here, guys. I'll, I'll probably speed it up and do some post-commentary for you guys. I'm going to leave you in the dark. This is new area. You know, it's not like me to uh, skip stuff with new... That's actually a lot of groups there. Hold on, Mox. M-O-X. Mox. Gox. Box. Rocks. I'm going to come here and try not to aggro a million of them at once. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys in a second. If anything comes to mind, then I, uh, I'll be sure to let you know. We're probably way into the second video already, actually. I've been going for about half an hour. <laughs> 